So this is like a pack of wild animals. Dallas Fields was the second fastest of their friend group of five that summer between sixth and seventh grade. But the day the, wo- the day the wolves came for them, he ran faster than Jordy. He ran faster than Jordy Keller had ever seen. Okay, I think that's right. It's kind of a long sentence. I may need to work on that, but I'm not going to do it right now. That gray wolf stayed right on the boy's ass all the way through the woods toward their treehouse that might as well have been on another continent. The other four boys leaned out the high, open window cut into the plywood wall as they yelled for Dallas to hurry. It wasn't like the boy planned to slow down with the animal hot on his heels. Ricky Burton was the one who said what the other three were thinking. He's not going to make it. The boy said it with such flat, emotionless certainty that it seemed like a foregone conclusion. Ricky's hair was dyed blue that summer with blonde highlights. His dad hated uh, His dad hated it. Hold on, I'll jump back on chat here in just a moment. His dad hated it, and the other boys made fun of him for it, although deep down they thought it was cool. By the late by that late July day, when Dallas ran from the Gray Wolf, Ricky's hair was faded to a denim blue with white highlights. All right. My writing says the prompt is great and I enjoy the stories that are coming from it, but it definitely is an emotional roller coaster. I don't know, man. I, I might have picked a. I would have chickened out. I'm just going to say it right, right now. I would have picked a, a prompt that kind of opened up um, other emotions besides the sadness, although that is pretty challenging um, and probably produces uh, some pretty solid stories. Um, what I like about those kind of challenges, whether it's, you know, five days in a row or however many days in a row of writing a story, um, you kind of get the poisons out. So it's the idea of like, not all those stories may be excellent, but the likelihood that like the third, fourth or fifth story is going to be great is higher, uh, because you've, you've kind of, uh, challenged yourself creatively. So I, I'm always a big fan of those. I tried to do a full month, um, back in March, but of course that was before I, um, before I had, before I knew I was going to have a heart attack. So like, um, it was, I was in the midst of recovery then still recovering, but, uh, couldn't, couldn't make the whole month. I had to give myself some more rest time. So I'm hoping to hit a whole month of streams again here at some point. Maybe I'll do it in October. I don't know. I got a lot of writing, uh, to do. And a lot of times, uh, if I stream every day in a month, that pretty much takes up all my time. But, um, We'll see how that plays out. I do want to do it again, though, because I do think I get good results from that from that particular exercise. Maybe a week would be good instead of doing a whole month. But uh, yeah, I, I, I like that idea. Daniel Volpe's here, one of the greatest new writers on the scene. I hope you don't mind me calling you new from my old perspective. Yeah, challenging yourself is very important. All right, Ricky was always drawing on himself. That afternoon, he had fake rings with intricate designs drawn in black around his fingers. If the day had gone differently, then he might have drawn full gloves and other fake jewelry around his hands and arms, too, before it was over. Let's say his father hated that, too. Jordy focused on the wormy dragon, Ricky had drawn around his left bicep. It had long, dripping fangs like the wolves. All right. Thank, thank you, sir. He'll get the he'll get here. Emery Carlson said he has to. Emery had dark hair with really bushy eyebrows like his father. Uh, Emery Carlson's dad's name really was Carl Carl Carlson. He sold shitty used cars down by the highway on the for, far side of the woods where they had their tree house. Um, Jordy's dad was the one that called the cars shitty. Jordy would never repeat such a thing to his friends. To his friend. Jordy sure as hell would have rather been over there. Would have rather been uh, over there. I use rather twice. Is that good? Jordy sure as hell would have rather been over there rather than up the tree above, let's say, as opposed. As opposed 
to up the tree above those walls anywhere but in that woods at that moment. I'm so new I'm covered in afterbirth. <laughs> See, that's the kind of writing that has you endeared to the readers on the internet. I need to I need to pick some, up some of that uh, afterbirth covered uh, persona you got going on. Clyde Austin said, even if he does make it this far, the other wolves are still here. Clyde had long stringy hair that always seemed greasy even after he showered. He was the first of them to start growing the hints of a mustache. He stunk from under his arms too, no matter how much he claimed to shower. His voice was deep and didn't break quite as much as it used to back in school or in early June. It gave his dire pronouncement of Dallas's fate a much heavier weight. Jordy Keller protested. No, they're gone. They wandered, wondered. Why were the wolves wandering? I don't know. I wonder. They wandered off that makes a little more sense when they realize they couldn't get us he'll be fine they're not gone ricky said they just circled out into the bushes off the trail we still heard them rustling around before dallas started yelling that's why we stayed up here clyde is right he's doomed emory looked back and forth to the other boys should we call for him to go the other way then what other way jordy asked his well his his wolf is right behind him where else can he go besides here Uh, Jordy had said his wolf instead of the wolf. It came from a dark idea that had not been fully realized inside his head. Yet, in the midst of all that terror, all this terror. All right. Um, I don't know. By the time I actually get around to really editing this, I will have edited this first half multiple times. So hopefully this story will be awesome for all the days I put into it. Hurry, Dallas, Emery yelled. Hurry, dude. The others joined in on the calls, even with the prevailing attitude toward his chances of survival. Dallas, a Dallas actually started to pull ahead. The gray wolf acted like it was losing interest. Its full out run turned into more of a bounding with its long tongue lolling out to, of one side of its mouth. It turned its great head to the side. Jordy had a weird moment where he thought about kids at school who fell behind in races and then pretended they were hurt. Maybe wolves pretended they were hurt, let's say, to save face. Maybe wolves pretended they weren't that hungry anyway, weren't that hungry anyway whenever they got tired from a chase. He and Dallas would take any he and Dallas would take any break they could get. Um, Jordy actually started to wonder, not wander this time, but wonder. Armand is here. He made it. What did I miss? Um, I'm writing the same story that I have written the last two streams, uh, Armand Rosamilia style. I'm trying to get back into Jay Wilburn style, where I knock these stories out and throw them onto Trello, where they sit and languish until uh, some publisher actually wants something. Uh, but Jordy actually started to wonder if the wolves were just toying with them. Maybe they really were just big dogs after all. Instead of a pack out here in the pocket of woods between all the highways and developments. Maybe 
they could walk right out of here if they did so confidently. Hope you're getting some writing done today, Armand. I know that uh, you had a lot going on today, and we're going to use this time to get a few things in, so I hope that works out for you. I'll, I'll try to be as uh, drab and monotone as possible to, to let you focus. <clears throat> That's going to be the new theme of my channel, drab and monotone. I'm going to get, put it on t-shirts. I expect you guys to buy mugs. All right, even Clyde and Ricky started beating on the wall of the treehouse below the window like they believed he had a chance. All right, Armand says, I will be writing more. I am getting tired, though. Might need to take a quick power nap soon. Uh, I, I hear you there. I uh, I crashed about one. I'm starting to crash every day. I, I, don't think, uh, I don't think I'm adjusting to my new medicines as well as, uh, as, well as I might um, otherwise. Great t-shirts. <laughs> I, I I don't understand why anybody would want any other color, gray and long sleeved. I mean, what what else would you want in life? It, I find it weird when anybody wants to wear anything else. I do think as a as a group, uh, us as horror writers, I know Armand, you're uh, moving into the lucrative field of crime fiction and uh, leaving us all behind, and probably will soon won't talk to us anymore. But um, as as people who have dabbled in horror or um, are fully buried in it at this point, I think we need to move away from black uh, concert t-shirts. I, I think there have been plenty of black concert t-shirts seen at um, horror conventions. I think we need to expand it to other colors and um, just really uh, liven up the place and uh, get away from that black t-shirt. So uh, that's why I'm going to come out with my uh, gray, my line of gray drab t-shirts. That would be that would be pretty funny just to have a gray T-shirt that has the word drab written across it or something like that. Drab, monotone, you know, things like that. That that'll be my new thing. And then when I people ask me to explain it, I'll pretend like it's a band that they they should already know about if they were cool enough. You know, remember these guys from the '80s? They were awesome. What songs did they uh, play? Oh, I don't remember. I wear a Cuban T-shirt. I wear Cuban shirts at signings now, except I'm too fat to fit into them. But they're ready to go. <laughs> there you go. By Cuban, you mean like the... Are those like the... Well, no. I was thinking like the, the shirts that have like one color down the middle and different on the sleeve or, or Cuban t-shirt. No, Cuban shirts. Um, they're, they're not the ones that have patterns on them. That's, that's what it is. Like a, a main color in the middle and then off to the side. Those shirts do look good on you, man. I hope they come with uh, pre-stretched collars. <laughs> Uh, I got a pretty big head. Uh, us Wilburns are known for our giant heads, um, especially as kids. So we stretch out a lot of stuff. You should have seen uh, my youngest son trying to learn to take a shirt on and off with his giant head when he was a kid. It was uh, it was quite a challenge. He, he's more proportion. His head's more proportional to his body now, but it's still pretty big. All right. Um, then the other four wolves emerged from the bushes on both sides, like the boys above had been calling, um, sorry, let's say as if instead of like, as if the boys above had been calling them, calling them forth. Get fancy. Anytime you use the F-O-R-T-H in a, in a, um, story you are fancy emory continued uh to yell for dallas to keep coming even after the other three got quiet on both sides he's giving up man you got this you you just get to the ladder just they all got quiet then dallas drew close enough for them to hear the wheeze of his breathing sweat glistened in his short crew cut his dirty white t-shirt was discolored with darker sweat um the four wolves fanned out in front of him, and the gray wolf took its time stalking him from behind. It looked like it had regained its appetite again. The other wolves were white, black, bushy brown, and then the last one was as red as a fox. They could just be dogs, Jordy thought, with no real conviction 
I think I might use that uh, phrasing a little too much, so I have to be cognizant of that to make sure I did not um, use it again somewhere in this story. Jay Wilburn as a skeleton. There you go. Strip to the bone. That's how uh, that's how I would look if I was ever chased by wolves. Uh, I'm, I've gotten back into running, but um, I don't I don't have the kind of uh, distance or endurance to outrun wolves at this point. I don't think that's really the that's really how they should uh, divide up your running ability. Could you outrun wolves? Could you outrun a cheetah? You know, so forth. And really, that comes down to distance. We're not faster than those animals, but uh, we we win by being able to maintain distance. All right, Jordy had a wild idea. What if Dallas just walked quietly between them and climbed up the hammered slats of their ladder, kind of like a sneak play in peewee football? By the time the wolves realized what was what he was doing, Dallas would be up and safe with them. But then what? What was the escape plan from the treehouse? Say first things first. He supposed. Jordy never voiced this idea. Never got around to voicing this idea. It was Ricky who said run. Dallas seemed not to understand the word at first, but then he cut sideways through the thorns, tearing himself open as he fled into the wilderness. Maybe it was the fresh blood, maybe it was starting the chase again. Wolves could probably smell fear. Uh, Jordy thought he'd heard that somewhere. Ben told it his whole life. In fact, all the wolves ran after Dallas. Dallas, Jordy bolted for the trap door, and the ladder nailed into the tree leading down below. Ricky got hands on him first, but Jordy still tried to get away from the larger boy. Clyde joined in, and together they wrestled him to the floorboards with creaks and screeches from the movement of the boards against the tenpenny nails. I have to help him. You'll just get yourself killed. Clyde's voice was deep to start with, but broke and went high and squeaky like the old days on the last two words. Emery said something from the window, but they couldn't hear it over Dallas's screams. And their own struggles. The other three boys stood. What happened? What is it? Jordy ran up beside Emery. Emery repeated himself, even though Jordy could now see for himself. Repeated himself now. Uh, Emery repeated it. I want to use himself twice. Even though Jordy could now see for himself, they got him. Four wolves tore into their friend on the ground in the deep piles of leaves off the trail. They gnawed and whipped their heads back and forth as they splattered his blood on the surrounding growth while tearing away meaty shreds of their friend. Frank Edler is here. <clears throat> like a majestic flying fish, he joins the stream. <clears throat> How's it going, Frank? Are you... Slacking off at work? Are you home? Are you watching a gymnastics meet? What's going on? It's just watching us, Ricky said. Dallas was still screaming. The cries were only just beginning to descend into whimpering, gagging whines. Why wasn't anyone coming to help? Someone around the populated edges of this patch of woods had to hear this. Is this how they always sounded when they were playing out here? Jordy's mom had made a comment about how crazy... Uh, how crazy they got out in the woods um, that she could hear even from the backyard. There we go. God, he wished he was standing there now running for the porch door instead of this lonely tree. Uh, Jordy thought he misunderstood the words Ricky said. 
Frank says, I miss the purple hair. I'm stealing a moment away from work to savor its lusciousness. Hold on. It's going from uh, blue back to purple here, so you should see it in a minute. There it is. All right. Trick of the light. Trick of the light. This is how the pros do it, I think. Okay. The wolf did not pant. Okay, hold on. Breathtaking. <laughs> maybe, maybe you're having breathing issues like I am. You should get your heart checked, Frank. Every, really, everybody in our friend group should get their heart checked. I mean, who are we kidding here? Jordy thought he misunderstood the words Ricky said. He was sure he was, was in shock, but then he saw it too. The red wolf, instead of joining the others, had sat in the middle of the trail on its broad haunches and stared up at the other boys trapped above. The wolf did not pant as it guarded them, but did lick its tongue out over its nose and continued to stare up. Jordy had the feeling this wolf was mostly watching him. All right. I heard curtains smash the drapes and the carpet. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, if I get the right lighting on him, you know, lighting's everything. Hey, he's got a little light sp <laughs> spinning in his pants. <laughs> Yeah, you have to pay extra for that one. It has it has to be um, it has to be custom made uh, in order to attach properly. All right, Emery said it's keeping an eye on us for the others. Clyde shook his head. No, they don't think like that. Maybe after they're done with, um, maybe they'll leave us alone. Jordy stepped away from the window. His stomach tightened and threatened to evacuate. He held it off as he rummaged through the junk they had in the corners of the shelves. <laughs> AdamandEve.com no, no, more, something more high class. I'm thinking, not not just standard off the shelf. Yeah, <laughs> use your use your promo code uh, um, J Wilburn for discounts on the pant light. Uh, I should I should get a I should get a deal for that. Make it a endorsement. Have have my little uh, logo face image on the side of the light. All right, I'm not going back down there for nothing, Ricky said. You going to live up here, Clyde asked. God, they're still tearing into him. Oh, God. Emery bowed his head and rested his dirty, sweaty forehead on the, let's say, bowed at the waist. I don't want to use the word head twice. Bowed at the waist. Make sure I get the right kind of waist there and rested his dirty, sweaty forehead on the rough edge of the plywood hole. They couldn't be comfortable, that couldn't be comfortable, but maybe that helped him focus on something besides his friend's death cries. He's still screaming. Oh, we should have done something. Let's say he's our friend. They're killing our friend. I want my parents I don't want to be here anymore All right. I always play around with um, how much you should say in a situation like that like obviously these these kids are under stress they're watching someone get killed so like it doesn't make sense to just have normal dialogue going on so really this sort of like stream of consciousness like shocked um overwhelmed uh s sort of ranting is probably more realistic but how far do you take it like where's the where's the right balance to where you've you said enough to indicate that these kids are 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 impacted by this but not that you've just kind of gone on and on and on too far. Jordy knocked several times, several items off a board shelf and continued rummaging. Nothing to do, Ricky said. They'd, they'd have killed us too. As if on cue, D Dallas fell silent. That just made it easier to hear the tearing and chewing. Jordy wondered if wolves actually chewed or 
just swallowed the chunks whole. He pushed the thought from his mind as best he could. <clears throat> and continued to gather gather things okay <clears throat> we have to get out of here sometime now might be the best with only one wolf to deal with all right who's talking cuz i just started talking about jordy here so we may need to um is that clyde let's make it clyde Clyde's voice shook and broke as he spoke. There we go. So we got Clyde back in there. Let's keep going. Are you kidding? Ricky asked. Emery moaned and said, they killed Dallas. He's dead. They killed him. We can't stay up here forever. I can stay up here until someone comes looking for us, Ricky said. So you want your dad, your mom... Okay, wrong. I need dad to be lowercase because it's not being used as a title. So you want your dad, your mom, or your brother to come out here with the wolves waiting for them? Clyde asked. You want my folks to come out here and get killed too? I, Ricky couldn't come up with the rest of that sentence. Someone with a gun needs to come, I guess. Clyde shook his head. If we wait until someone comes looking, someone who cares about us, Dallas won't be the only one who... Jordy muscled his way back between his friends. Emery got a splinter in his forehead before he raised it away from the plywood edge. Jordy threw something out before the others saw what he had. The baseball sailed out just to the left of the red wolf's head and bounced along the trail. The ball was dirty and spotted to the point of almost being black. The red stitched, the red stitching, the red stitching had faded and frayed. The ball wobbled as it finished rolling, having lost the integrity of its shape long before it became a fixture in their treehouse collection of junk. From under its skin, the lighter webbing of the ball's filler had started to show through, giving it a rough texture. Um, all right, got to go, uh, Daniel says. Uh, see you later, too, buddy. Thanks for dropping in. I appreciate the support. All right. Jordy comforted himself by thinking... If the ball had still been round, he would have hit his target. Whether it was true, whether it was true or not, Gave him the courage to try again. I'm going to split that little bit off into another paragraph. It probably still belongs up in the top one, but I'm going to make two paragraphs there. The red wolf looked behind itself at the ball a few feet away and then back up to the boys trapped above. Were you trying to get it to play fetch? Clyde asked. Jordy threw the next object without answering. It's harder... Sharper corners twirled off center through the air in a quick falling arc. Uh, arch, I should say arc there. The wolf stood and shuffled backwards as if sensing something was different this time. It ducked its head and started to turn just before the sandy brick bounced off the animal's furry neck with a dull thud. The animal yelped in a way that might have 
derived sympathy under other circumstances. It backed off a few feet, but then lowered its massive snout to the trail and showed its teeth with a deep growl that f deep with a deep growl from its throat that filled the air between the pines and oaks. Any doubt that this large creature was any sort of ordinary dog was dispelled in that moment instead of seen. All right, that brick had come from new construction in a neighborhood cul-de-sac toward the west, where the sun was gradually dipping down into the trees. They wanted to bring more to the treehouse. Let's say they had wanted. They had wanted to bring more to the treehouse, but had been chased off a few days earlier. Chased off by the construction workers, not the wolves. Who knew then how useful a pile of bricks might have been uh, this day? Jordy lifted up a broken snow globe that they, they had found half buried in the pine straw a long time ago. Um, let's say it was an early addition to their strange collection of junk and treasures. A couple plastic snowmen and a Santa Claus bounced around inside the waterless sphere. The other boys grabbed up objects from Jordy's collection of trash as well. They hesitated. Let's say they then they then hesitated as the other wolves, with blood still fresh upon their jowls, circled back onto the trail. They either, the entire pack, edged away from the treehouse, but kept their haunted eyes forward and up to what threat the boys could offer up. I'm going to take out the up here. No reason to have two of them. All right, should we keep throwing at them? Emery asked with his voice shaking and a smooth rock in his grasp. They might be out of range now, Ricky said. Hell, I can throw that far. Clyde tested his own rock by bouncing it in his hand. Unless you think you can bash their heads open, I'm not sure we can save ourselves here by throwing at them, Ricky said. The boys stood staring and considered the predators that had them pinned in place. Blood actually dripped from the snouts of the wolves who had been colors other than red before they all set upon Dallas. Jordy swore he could see the gristle between their fangs. insides. This was life and death. And he was really starting to believe the death wasn't over. Jordy threw the snow globe. tried for the naturally red wolf again.
perhaps he should have gone for one of the others. Because his wolf was ready. It danced backward and to the side. The snow globe, say the dry snow globe, the dry snow globe. Is this making me do two words only? Yeah. The dry snow globe uh, thumped on the trail and broke open, scattering its pieces, but not shattering the curved piece of glass. He probably would have missed anyway, but the animal was taking no chances. The other boys threw as well. The other wolves made to dodge, but at least two of them let out yelps after taking hits. Jordy kept his eyes locked upon the red wolf. Who glared back at him. His friends rearmed for another volley. things started to change. The wolves, one by one, rose up onto their back haunches. Their upper bodies Weld out and their shape morphed to allow them to stand better. I'll say to better stand. What's happening? Emery asked, lowering his throwing arm back down by his side. This can't be real, Ricky said. Clyde added his own comment, but whatever it was got lost in a choking cough. The 
wolves launch themselves forward. Running on two legs and pumping their arms as they charged. few vanished below the treehouse. A few vanished below the treehouse and their claws scraped against the bark of the tree. Those scratching sounds climbed upward and drew closer. The red wolf sprung from the ground. and tried to claw his way up the side of the wall. Uh, wood peeled away. The window broke open wider. Emery tried to slam their makeshift shutter closed, but one of the hinges popped loose and it hung askew. Alright, I'm going to make this two paragraphs because they're really two different actions there. I want to mix the action that's going on too so it seems a little more chaotic. Um, bark and the rungs. The wrong kind of rungs? Their ladder peeled and broke away from the tree. Uh, let's say Jordy dared to look over the side down into the red monster's face as its bulging arms clawed. All right, I have misspelled bulging two different ways. There we go. As its bulging arms clawed away more of the front wall. The beast held onto one of the supporting limbs, Let's say branches, branches jutting out from under the base of the treehouse. As it reached with 
the other paw for another handhold. Jordy lifted his rock into view and took aim on the monster's face. The creature decided to let loose and drop back to the ground this time. Jordy dared to lean out and put a comma there, still meaning to brain the mutated wolf thing. The trap door bounced up behind him once and then a second time. The third time it flung completely open and the black furry head of another wolf squeezed through. It pivoted around the opening, growling and slobbering Dallas's blood onto the floorboards. Its eyes seemed to finally fix upon Emery. Okay, I'm going to make this a new paragraph here. Its eyes seemed to finally fix upon Emery and even tracked him as the boy shuffled round the edges of the structure looking for any place any path of escape tried to squeeze through. But it was too big. Then it clawed into the tree tr into the tree trunk. and thrust itself upward, separating the boards around the opening. Jordy turned and threw with all his might. The rock struck the monster's eye socket and bounced back toward him.
blood painted over its yellow eye and it howled but kept fighting fighting its way in all right moving right along Jordy went for the rock, went for his rock, but got too close, and the animal reached with one clawed arm up between boards at him. It might have gotten him too, but Emery hurled oh, what's something? Hurled a broken metal lamp clobbered the beast on the side of the skull. The monster almost seemed to be trying to speak as it garbled out its anger at the offense. It missed Jordy by inches as the boy retrieved the rock, circled around and started bludgeoning the creature on the back of its furry skull. Let me make this the same paragraph, sorry. It tried to twist around to be done with the boy. But then lost its grip and fell back to the ground. Clyde sprung forward Clyde sprung forward and slammed the trap door shut though it no longer fit snugly into its slot. Ricky jumped forward and joined Clyde in holding the door closed.
Jordy staggered away. And nearly stepped between two of the boards that no longer, I've already done no longer, that didn't align in the floor any longer, anymore. The build had been so perfect before, it was a real shame that they hadn't made it wolf monster proof. The wall in front of them broke into three large pieces that fell away. with two wolves that had made another jump from the ground. The boys stared out into wide open air and at large monsters on the ground that seemed so much closer to them than they had before. Another impact from below bounced the trap door. I think that's a compound word. I'll get to it later though. Trap door. Yep. I need to go back through the story and fix that. Another impact from below bounced the trap door with the boys with uh, Clyde and Ricky parked on top. They gave a grunt the next strike broke the door in two. Both of them scrambled away. Both of them scrambled away. the pieces of the trap door fell below. Three boards around that opening Shifted, tilted, and fell off the branches. They piled up at angles with the sharp points. They piled up at angles. Sorry, let me fix a typo there. They piled up at angles with the sharp points of the twisted 
and bent nails sticking up even with the wolves all around Jordy imagined himself falling on those nails and he shivered we have to run for it Jordy said we have to No way. Emery huddled in one of the surviving corners. No way. Emery huddled in one of the surviving corners. Um, closest to the tree trunk. We'll die. They'll kill us for sure. If we stay up here, Jordy yelled. They're going to knock the tree house apart and then take us one. <clears throat> Brown Wolf. In its mutated form, the Brown Wolf in its mutated form was still very bushy as it leapt up into view on the open side of the dying treehouse. Dying probably is the wrong word. I'll say failing. Of the failing treehouse. The brown wolf in its mutated form was still very bushy as it leapt up into view uh, on the open side of the failing treehouse where it seized Clyde by his ankle. Clyde's eyes went wide and he got out the word please for he slammed to his face and then jerked backward off the side. Jordy dove and tried to grab his friend by the hands, but Clyde was off the side, say over the side, over the side, 
and gone before Jordy ever landed and bit into his own tongue. Clyde's voice broke over and over as he screamed in fear and pain upon the ground. The wolves growled as they fell upon him with the meaty tearing sounds came with the meaty tearing sounds came the um, the meaty tearing sounds came the grinding noise of teeth the grinding noise of teeth working into and through bone the boards of the floor shifted again and the boards of the floor shifted again the boards of the floor shifted again and Jordy rolled to the side to avoid being dumped down under the tree with them few of them flipped over and landed nails up as well. Others braced on the tree and formed steep ramps up from the bloody ground. A chasm with a thick branch bridge now separated. Jordy from the other two surviving boys over on the tree trunk side of the split structure. What do we do? Emery screamed. We have to run for it. Jordy said. Which way? Ricky asked, how? Clyde still screamed and hacked from his back. 
just below them. black and the white. All right, I need to make this a new paragraph. The black and the white wolves scrambled up the tilted boards toward them. Jordy felt for the rock to try to do his best to defend himself, but he realized it was gone. He reached for anything came up with, he reached for anything and came up with a dirty spotted full length mirror uh, propped forgotten in one far corner. It came away from the walls with the scratching sound of old breaking cobwebs. The entire half of the treehouse hanging out on the ends of the limbs where Jordy was stranded shifted few degrees tilted toward the south. More of the boards broke away as the boys screamed. pair of wolves tried to climb up with them. Two of the ramped boards snapped under them and they fell. Tree house tilted a little more and trash spilled off the shelves onto the monsters' heads. They howled and ran out from under the tree to join the others. They howled and ran out from under the tree to join the others around Clyde's body. Jordy thought the boy might still be crying out 
for help, but he couldn't tell. Go now, Jordy yelled. You have to. Uh, Ricky met eyes with Jordy across the expanse. And then Jordy, you know, Ricky met eyes with Jordy across the expanse and then jumped down from the edge. He screamed and howled as he speared. I say skewered. As he skewered. Skewered. He screamed and howled as he skewered his calf and thigh on one line of nails exposed below. White Wolf returned to the scene. It looks up at the last two boys staring down in shock. And almost seemed to grin in the way wolves did. The upright monster dragged Ricky with the board still nailed to the boy's leg out from under the tree to where the other wolves feasted. Jordy, why is this happening? He shook his head and said, Go down the ladder and run. I can't. I can't move. have to. Now is our only chance. If we stay up here, we die for sure. Alright. Emery cried without shame. As he swung out where the trap door used to be, and began.
can climbing down the rungs. Jordy had no idea if they stood a chance if the wolf monsters were distracted at all. But this was the only play as he saw it. Jordy stepped out onto the branch, onto the thick branch, between the halves of their old treehouse. to make his way across. Then Emery fell too. Some of the rungs were missing. Emery fell too. Some of the rungs were missing from the wolves trying to climb. He landed hard on his back and gave a heavy grunt followed by silence from the wind getting knocked out of him. Emery. The black wolf lifted its wet snout from the bodies of their other two friends. The red wolf moved as well. Jordy stepped back onto the tilted floor on his side of the structure and waved his mirror at them even though they were too far way to hit. It was his fault. Emery had tried. And Emery was his last friend left alive. Hey, I'm up here. Come and get me. Say, Jordy let fly every cuss word he knew. He strung them together. Okay, let me fix a typo here. He strung them together in a phrasing. That made no sense. He was out of his mind with fear 
and anger. The violation of watching his friends die like this was too much to bear. It was bigger than the fear of dying himself. He even used the really, really bad curses that would shame his parents if they heard. The wolves looked up at him for whatever reasons might have drawn their attention. Um, spots of light danced over their faces and the animals twisted away trying to cover their faces their eyes trying to cover their eyes with their paws Jordy was given pause by this, and then tilted the mirror on purpose to dazzle the wolves with the reflected light. Run, Emery, while you can. Jordy glanced down to his dismay to see Emery curled upon his side. not moving at all. He might have been unconscious. Or frozen with fear. Either way, Jordy decided he was going down there. He was going to try. He was going to be with his friend. However, this played out. The Red Wolf leapt up onto the floor on its hind legs right in front of Jordy. It bent forward. It bent forward, showed its teeth arched its back. Jordy swung and shattered the mirror across 
the beast's head. taking a moment to figure out what I'm doing tomorrow. I'm going to finish this story today, though. Um, it shattered the mirror across the beast's head. Uh, let's say... The monster staggered backward. Bleeding darker red into its fur from multiple cuts. This was the most satisfied Jordy had been all day. Then Tree house broke free. The tree house broke free of its framing. And tilted completely over. that a new paragraph there. Right. Then the treehouse broke free of its framing and tilted completely over the wolf thing disappeared from Jordy's sight. The world spun as everything moved faster than he could track or register. He fell away into space and then tumbled down a couple tilted boards he rolled out onto onto the hard ground say stopping inches short catching his eye on the ends of some bent nails. The falling treehouse continued to crash and break apart all around him. Debris flew everywhere. Oh, thank you for the raid, Blitzer. I appreciate it. Bitzer. I'm in the middle of writing a, a werewolf story. Some kind of kids trying to run away from werewolves in the woods. So we'll see how this plays out. Hopefully you enjoy it. It's, <laughs> it's a, a bits or blitz. Here we go. Thank you for dropping in, everybody. Cadman, I appreciate you sneaking in before bedtime. I know it's late out there where you are. I caught a, I caught a little bit of your stream. It seemed like you streamed a good bit one day there playing some uh, games 
had you on in the background as I was uh, working on some other things. Can't remember if that was yesterday or the day before. Ten hours. Good Lord, man. What you trying to prove? <laughs> I guess if you're going to play video games anyway, there's nothing wrong with having the stream going. It gives you an excuse to be on that long if you're playing something you enjoy. I don't think I've ever done... Well, that's not true. I've done a... I did... I did a 24 hour stream, but it wasn't anywhere near 24 hours. I think I ended up doing 14 hours, um, where I was writing and then I would take breaks and come back on and had it on that whole time. Um, that's actually when I became an affiliate was during that, uh, stretch of time. I managed to average over three viewers that whole time. Uh, but that's as long as I've ever done. I'm never doing it again. That was, that was too much. That was before in a lot of the health issues I have now too, but thank you for being here. We'll, we'll be we'll be on a while longer. I don't know if it'll be the full. I don't know if I'm going to do a Kedman ten hours, but I, I'll probably do a couple hours here at least. All right. So we had a falling tree house and werewolves all around, as as tends to happen from time to time. Uh, debris flew everywhere, and Jordy waited to be crushed out of existence. Pieces of wood stung his back through his shirt. But he went on living. That left the deadly wolf monsters that he could still hear growling and howling over all the commotion. motion. He needed to get moving if he wanted a chance at living. All right. Kenman says, seen a bikini stream last week in the girl's bikini. So almost an adult stream. Yeah, there's some out there. They're making money. Couldn't stop looking at her cool tattoos. On her arm. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Whatever brings in the viewers, I guess. Can't can't hate on him for that. I guess he needed to get moving if he wanted a chance at living. He rolled to his side, taking care to avoid. The nails around him. Emery was down here somewhere. Well, they have an advantage compared to. <laughs> yeah, I, I will say they're putting on uh, a little more of an exciting show than than uh, my writing stream. Even my best writing stream, I I don't think. Uh, has the same kind of appeal, but I'll, I'll do my best here. Emery was down here somewhere closer to the tree, but Jordy, yes, Waldo ran the show. There you go. <laughs> Next November, we'll uh, see what we can do with Waldo again. He rolled to his side, taking care to avoid the nails around him. Emery was down here somewhere. Closer to the tree, but Jordy couldn't find him, couldn't locate him. The wolves. The wolves were close. They either had him or they didn't. Soon, okay, put a period there. Just for fun, I'm going to put periods at the end of sentences. Uh, soon they would have Jordy too. Jordy wobbled to his feet, but 
couldn't seem to get moving. It was like he had forgotten how to run. Go. He ordered himself. Go. Go. Finally, his legs obeyed. He charged through the debris field. Out from under the tree. And through the woods. In a random direction. He wanted to run home. Even, even if he didn't make it. He wanted to go home. It was all he wanted in the world. He expected to spear his foot on some upturned nails. It seemed unavoidable. But he managed to run out ahead of the broken tree house and kept going as he heaved for breath. All right, still have a Christmas tree behind me in my streams. There you go. I am unique. Laugh out loud. There you go. It's either a style choice or uh, you are extremely lazy and, and need to need to get your house back in order. One or the other. It could be both, I guess. Kept going as he heaved for breath. They were behind him. He heard them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they were behind him. He heard them. He felt them coming for him. The last of his friend group. All right, my household had a Christmas tree up for five years because of storage issues. Oh, there you go. There you go. We, uh, we had a bad habit a couple different years, especially back when I was still working as a teacher and was really busy. If I didn't get the Christmas decorations down by New Year's Eve, then they probably weren't coming down till February at the earliest. And um, uh, yeah, we have we have pictures where the the Christmas decorations are still up and it's nowhere near Christmas. But then um, uh, since then. Now that I'm a full-time writer, uh, sometimes we'll get lazy with it, but uh, we do our best to to get it done. There's just something about if I don't if I don't get the Christmas decorations down by New Year's Eve, I kind of I kind of get depressed and tired uh, with them being up past that time. So I always try to take a make the effort to to get them down. It's usually my wife that uh, puts in a lot of the work, though. Why take it down before February? I don't know. I don't know. You should. You're supposed to have Christmas cheer all year round, right? Why not have lights up until it starts to be lighter in the mornings of the year? There you go. 
it's it's all in perspective, you know. It's not laziness. It's a choice. It's a choice to to live your life in a way that's full of cheer, even into the deep depths of winter. Uh, let's see. He knew that turning around to see what was behind you made you run slower. Not to mention that he might run right into a tree at the worst possible moment. But he couldn't help himself. He braced himself to see the ravaged bodies of his friends. Instead, he saw Emery running. The boy was going in a different direction. Diagonally away from Geordie's path. At least he was up and running. Maybe going two different directions gave them a better chance at survival. Got to go now before I can't leave your stream. All right, man. Have a good one. Uh, have a good night's sleep, man. I look forward to seeing you on sometime again. At least he was up running. Maybe going two different directions gave them a better chance at survival. At least for one of them, maybe. Then he saw the black wolf on all fours again. Chasing after Emery. It was coming up on him fast. It was like Dallas. It was like watching Dallas get run down all over again. Then he spied the Red Wolf still keep misspelling wolf. I think I'd get that right in this story by now. Then he spied the Red Wolf still on its back legs. Coming after him. Jordy faced forward and ran for all he was worth, weaving between the trees. And ducking through smaller openings in lower branches and spreading thickets. The wolf cried out. it ripped through those spaces too. Seemingly right behind him. Let's 
say Jordy was running out of energy. He stared into the muted glare of the setting sun between the trees. running west the wrong direction but no choice now no choice left to him now say no other choice left to him now there we go long after he expected to be snagged by a dark claw. Long after he expected to be snagged by a dark claw and torn apart by long fangs, he emerged from the trees into the construction site of a partially completed house. Much of the brickwork had been completed. large piles of the rusty sandy bricks remained. The windows and doors had not been installed yet. windows and doors had not been installed yet um, so he could get in get inside so could the monster chasing him uh, Jordy left footprints in a scattering of sand over the grassless yard as he cried out for help. The site was silent and deserted though. No nail guns, no music from a radio, no voices, and no hammers. He was alone with the empty echoes of his own voice. He grabbed up two bricks as he sprinted for the door. for the doorway to what would be the basement or maybe a lower level utility room. He 
be spun about in time to see the red wolf coming up right behind him and its full mutated monster form. Jordy showed his own teeth as he swung first one brick and then another both clutched in his fists. He connected with the end of the monster's black nose and then crunched its paw where it held the edge of the doorway they both occupied. The beast staggered backward and away as it clawed its own face. The creature began to shrink. Its full wolf form was still quite large, but still something less than the monster that, but still something less than the monster that could um, stand on its back legs. Just emerging from the trees, just emerging from the trees, um, still upright, were the gray and bushy brown wolves. Despite towering over him, their tongues still lolled out of the side of their rows of teeth. He thought of these two creatures as Dallas's and Clyde's wolves. His friends were dead and their blood painted these beasts uh, Jordy let fly with one brick and then the other.
they both connected with the monster's heads. And staggered them backward. Both creatures started to diminish into their true wolf forms too. Let's say we're hitting the home stretch here, we'll be done soon. Jordy considered his options. Everything in him wanted to retreat into the house and find a place to hide. The wolves would still be here though. This was just one more house that provided a false sense of security, much like their destroyed treehouse did. House of Sticks had not held up. This House of Bricks likely would not serve as well as the children's store fables. made it sound like it would. I hadn't planned to put a Big Bad Wolf analogy in there, but it just kind of presented itself, so let's see how this goes. He stalked out past his red wolf, still transforming. He took up more bricks from the pallet out in the yard, out in the exposed yard, and threw them one after the other. gray and brown wolves. The gray and brown wolves took multiple shots, multiple hits, and bounded away into the shadows of the forest. Jordy turned in time to see the full red wolf staring at him. He climbed up onto the pile of bricks as the wolf held its ground. The boy raised a brick in each hand. The wolf lowered its snout to the ground. Showing his teeth. said, 
this is for Emery. Brick bounced off the wolf's hip. And it shuffled to the side. Emery might still be alive. But Jordy wasn't sure. He let fly again. This is for Dallas. The wolf tried to maneuver away, I took a heavy blow to the middle of its back. tried to maneuver away but took a heavy blow to the middle of its back as Jordy lifted two more bricks the animal bolted for the woods Jordy called his other friends names and aimed for the creature's head. He missed as it disappeared. He sat... Hold on, let me make this a new paragraph. We're almost at the end. He sat with bricks in each hand for a long time. His arms and shoulders grew tired and shaky, but he was afraid to move. Darkness was closing in, though. Go said to himself, go, go. He leapt off the pile and ran for the street, gasping for breath on the curb. looked in dismay at the new construction with no one moved in yet. No help here. Unable to run any longer. Jordy paced down the center of the new street. Of the new, yeah, the new street. Toward the main road. Eventually, he dropped one brick. And then the other. It wasn't really a decision. 
he just couldn't seem to hold them any longer. He knew he should walk along the side of the road. But he chose to stay in the center of the street. Even with the darkness closing, as he turned for home. Headlights spilled over him, and Jordy waved his arms to be seen, but he made no move to get to the side. No way. All right, hold on. Make this a new sentence. No way was he approaching those woods ever again. First, the driver laid down on his brakes. The scream of rubber against the road sounded too much like the death cries of his friends. Uh, then the driver employed the horn and it reminded Jordy of howls, causing him to shake all over. The guy jumped out from behind his wheel and cursed Jordy a fool. I need help. The man kept yelling. My friends are dead. Please help me. continued to berate the boy in his path as more cars rolled to a stop coming from both directions. Jordy covered his ears both hands and screamed, shut the hell up and help me. They're dead. My friends were killed. Please help me. The adults gathered, and the man finally stopped chewing Jordy out. Motion, hold on. Motion drew 
his attention off the road. He spied four wolves among the trees where they sat and watched him. It was getting dark, but he recognized the gray, white, and bushy brown wolves. Of course, well, I misspelled wolves again. Apparently that word is harder to spell than I think it is. Of course, his red wolf was there too. The black wolf, the one that had been chasing Emery, was nowhere to be seen. That was probably a bad sign. Jordy refused to get into any of their cars, but made them call the police. And then call his parents as he stood in the middle of the road among the lights of the gathering cars. He would not let anyone touch him or move him to the side of the road even long after the wolves had retreated into the woods again. <laughs>